So a few days ago, DuckTuckGo made a blog post talking about their goals for the upcoming year. And it was an interesting blog post, and I'll link to it in the video description so you can read the whole thing. But buried in that blog post, there was an announcement of a desktop browser. Now, it's not every day that we see a brand new desktop browser being announced. It's actually pretty rare. The last one that probably came out was probably Brave, and that's been around for quite a while now. So it was kind of exciting that there was this announcement that we're going to see a new desktop browser. And the thing is, is that we don't know a ton about it. We just don't. There, there was a grand total of two paragraphs in the blog post, which I'll show you actually right now. I mean, literally, this is all the information we have on what is coming from DuckDuckGo. And several uh, YouTubers have made videos about this so far, and I'm not going to be this to death. There's not a lot you can say because there's not a lot that we know. So the question I have to ask is should we be excited about it? And I think the answer to this has to be no. And that is also kind of a sad answer because it, I've made a video about uh, two or three weeks ago now about how we deserve a better open source browser because we don't really have a, an open source browser out there that is just awesome. Like it is 100% awesome across the board, has no problems whatsoever. Now, obviously the, the path to perfection is an impossible path to tread. So expecting a perf perfect browser is, is only going to lead to disappointments. So the thing is though, is that competition is a good thing. The problem with the DuckDuckGo browser is that it's not going to be providing any competition at all. Like it's according to this right here, what they're going to be doing is they're going to be building their desktop app around oops, building their desktop app around OS provided rendering engines. I don't know what this means. I don't know what it means. If this was like iPhone, I'd understand because iPhone has an OS provided rendering engine. No other operating system that I know of has an OS provided rendering engine. None of them. Linux doesn't have it. Mac doesn't have one. Windows doesn't have one. Now, Mac and Windows come with browsers. That's true. But those aren't like, I don't think that the, you can consider those OS provided rendering engines. They're not meant for other people to use. Not, not in the way that the iOS rendering engine is meant to be used. Like on, I, on iOS, Apple enforces the use of WebKit across the board. You can't use anything else, but that's not the case on Mac or Windows and really, and especially not Linux. So what on earth is an OS provided rendering engine in those cases? Does that mean on Mac OS, they're going to be using WebKit and on Windows, they're going to be using Chromium based rendering engine? That makes no sense, right? Because why would you go through and create a browser that is supposed to be the same across platforms and then not have them be the same. Like, how, how are you going to deal with extensions? How are you going to uh, deal with the fact that the internet is rendered differently depending on what rendering engine you're using? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. It sounds like a they're just making a ton more work for themselves than what really needed to be. So should we be excited about the DuckDuckGo browser? I don't think we should because I don't know what it's going to be. I I can't be excited about something that we really don't know what it means because this makes no sense whatsoever. Why would they go through the pain of basically building two different browsers? Because that's what they would have to do. They'd have to build two different browsers. And they've already done this once. They had to build one on Android and they had to build one on iOS and they're using different rendering engines. So... Are they going to go through and do that two more times? And then what are they going to do for Linux? Because Linux does not have an OS provided rendering engine. It it doesn't. Uh, I don't, I mean, it does anything, any rendering engine can run on Linux if they want it to, but there's not one that's provided by a, a, a single distro. I mean, because we don't have a, a, a single distro, we have 12,000 distros and they all, I mean, some of the, most of them come with Firefox, of course, but several distros come with Brave. Some of them come with, like, Pale Moon. Linux doesn't have one. And I don't think you really can say Windows or macOS have one either. Because, like I said, the browsers that are on macOS and Windows aren't meant to be used by other applications. I, not in the way that this is being talked about. Now, like I said, it's different on iOS, but it's not, it's not the same on the desktop. It's just not. At least from the way I understand it. Now, I mean, obviously, apps can use... Safari to launch websites, but that's just you, that's just providing a, an app link or an app hook to another application. It's or 
even if they do render something you know, like inside their app, but and but use Safari to do it, that's their choice. They could have used something different on macOS. That's the, I mean, macOS is much more open than iOS, and they can use whatever they want. I don't understand why DuckDuckGo is limiting themselves to an OS provided rendering engine if that exists when they could have just done something different, like fork Firefox. I mean, that's the solution for this, right? It has to be the solution. I don't think DuckDuckGo is big enough to make their own rendering engine. Maybe they are. If I mean, I would love to see them try. But the solution here was to fork Firefox. There aren't enough Firefox forks out there. They could take Firefox and make it good and make it mainstream. They have enough money to market a new browser. They could have saved a ton of time by just taking Firefox and forking it. It would have been a, a great solution, I think instead of this wishy-washy whatever the hell they're going to do. And that's, I mean, that's the thing. I guess I, I've always had a problem with companies that pre-announce things, but don't actually give you any details. Nintendo does this all the time, or at least they used to. They'll announce a game, I mean, hell, the whole game industry does this all the time. They'll announce a game that gives you like a five-second glimpse of what the game is going to be, and then literally no other details. And then it doesn't come out for ten years. Like, you know, it, it, like this is, oh, look, this is what's coming in the future. I hate that, and I've always hated it. The fact that DuckDuckGo is not doing this, like, why did we need to even know this if you're not going to give us at least some information? And the information they gave us is so utterly confusing that it seems stupid. Like, this doesn't seem like a good idea at all. So, a rambly video for uh, a topic that I think probably is is going to be talked about again many times in the future because eventually this browser is going to come to Linux and I'm going to try it and it's going to suck. I have a feeling. I just have a feeling that it's going to be bad. I mean, they said it's faster than Chrome, but that seems like marketing speech to me. Like I know I'll believe it when I see it. You know what I mean? A lot of a lot of browsers have claimed to be faster than Chrome, even those ones that are basically based on Chrome. I mean, seriously, like Edge says it's faster than Chrome. I don't know that it is, but they say it. These companies can say whatever they want. And I think that that's the bottom line is that we're just going to have to wait and see uh, and maybe hope for the best. But I, I don't have a, a lot of high hopes. I'd be much more excited if this was based on Firefox. Like if they'd forked Firefox and said, hey, we're going to come out with a Firefox based browser that is awesome. I'd be like, cool, sign me up. I want one. Uh, but uh that's not what's going to happen. So anyways, th that is it for this video. If you have comments on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. Make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button. I really do appreciate that if you've done that already. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I would like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Today, Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2, Fun 2, Patrick L, Primus, Marcus, Meglin, Jack, Time Tools, Steve A, Cybergay, Linux, Mitchell, Art Center, Amateus, Carbon Dated, Merrick, Camp, Josh Lee, J-Dog, The BSC's Rock, Peter, and Crucible. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.